Not officially. <laughs> Not officially, it might, might get heard, but uh, it's better for us to hear why you'd like to see it different rather yeah. than try to interpret it yeah. ourselves. Other questions? Yeah, we still have time. Hi, so um, I want to talk about Mass Effect 3 and the blowback that happened about the ending and how did you deal with what seemed like a flood of negative feedback and was it positive feedback that kind of balanced out or like what, how did, how did that like affect one, you personally like seeing this after like a game people love and then like how did you kind of parse that out and realize was it terribly negative like they're saying everyone hates the ending when mm -hmm. like I don't think everyone really did. Well, I think the hard part of it, I'll, I'll let you deal with this, but the, the thing to be cautious of that, that and, and the thing that I think was difficult for the Mass Effect team, which, which I'm not actually on, uh, was that uh, the, there was a, a lot of different opinions, and I think that a lot of people like to present it as, and everybody disliked this one thing, right? When that was, I don't think that was ever true. There, there was a, a wide array of emotions and reactions that uh, really uh, made the team sort of sit back, and, and they had to consider it very carefully. So this is how it all went down. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually started seeing stuff before the game even came out. Um, due to, through the lovely joys of uh, promotion that we had to get some people early copies of the game, and then those got sold on eBay, and then those uh, went on like, Twitch or something and people were playing through, we started seeing people already talking about stuff. Um, that, of course, in started increasing. I started getting messages from certain people being like, this is like GameStop managers, for instance, being like, I am, this is not really normal at all for Mass Effect. I don't know why people are talking to me about this stuff. So we took various things it, and um, it meant different things for different people like obviously marketing is going to respond to you know GameStop managers saying that I'm going to respond to people on a, a Twitch stream saying stuff and so we, we took that and we listened it yes it was overwhelmingly negative there there would absolutely it be incorrect to say that I don't think that everyone felt that way because again since it's all died down, I have heard a lot more, yeah, you know, I thought it was fine, whatever. But those people also say, but you know, I moved on with my life, or <laughs> I, 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 I just quote that out of context. <laughs> or they, they, you know, they say things like, but I, you know, I did not want to stick myself in that fight. And I was like, yeah, I don't, I didn't want you to either. Like, you don't need to get, like, people shouting at you for enjoying something or for feeling neutral about it. So a lot of people were just like, they walked in and it's like a bar fight going on. And they're like, nope, I'm going to go find another bar. <laughs> and the, the really difficult problem for my team, and I, I don't think I've worked as hard on anything in my whole life. I was, I was at the office until 2 a.m. and then I would come back. I would go home and it was like a 30 minutes because there were no traffic to go home. I would go to sleep for an hour um, and I'd still have my Twitter next to me and I'd be answering as many questions as I could until a few times Twitter locked me out because I had tweeted too many times in one day and they thought I was a spam bot. <laughs> that happened a few times. One time I did, I tweeted a thousand times in one day and I was pretty proud of that. Um, so, so then I would, I would wake up again um, at like 5 in the morning, drive to work, 6 a.m., be there. Um, I got really friendly with the security guards. Um, <laughs> And and that was that was what we did, and it was it was so important to us, not because people were angry about it, but because, like I said, they couldn't tell us how to make a car. They were they were saying I didn't I don't like this, but they had a million different reasons. There's no one reason why. There's no majority. There's a lot of different things, and I actually think that in hindsight, it's kind of a cool thing that it sparked so many different discussions. Um, there's still a lot of really cool theories out there that um, I've actually gone back and played the game again and been like, oh, that's, I'm going to play as if this is what's going on. And there's no reason why not to. It's definitely levels of meaning and metaphor. Uh, but after that, 
um, my team compiled a giant Excel spreadsheet and said, these are the main concerns. How do we want to address these? We, Can we address them? Um, yes, well, yes, so we had the, the big list. I think there were about 40 different things that I boiled it down to. Um, we took it to the team. Um, we had a giant meeting with Casey, Aaron, Flynn, who's our GM, um, my team, a lot of the producers, some of the writers, uh, a lot of the you know lead like concept artists and cinematic designers, and we said, okay, what here is reasonable? What here is not? What here do we want to? Do. Like, obviously, we did not mean for people to think that Tally is starving and having to, like, eat herself because she, there's no, like, Dutch or food for her to eat. That was not our intention. So, obviously, we need to correct some of these things. And, obviously, there are some people who are never going to be pleased. Let's figure out who those people are. Um, say, you know, thank you, but no thanks. That's not what we're going to do. Who are the people that we want to, want to please and, and who are the people that we know are already happy with it? And what we boiled it down to was we want to provide clarity and closure. And that represented what we thought was the most amount of people asking for, again, not quite knowing exactly how to frame it. And so then we went in and said, okay, so we, we had another big meeting and said, okay, let's look at all of the things that people were asking for about uh, the genophage, about um, the chlorine and the gas, and, and we put it down to the top three things, and then other things that went along with it, the stories that people wanted their, their closure on. And I think there's, um, there's about like 138 different you know, threads and narratives that it, it could have gone into. Um, I wish I had the amazing, just like, plot conditionals. It's insane. Um, if you go online, you can see the San Diego Comic Con panel from 2012 for that whole, it's crazy, and Parrish um, Lay, who is the lead cinematic designer for that, did that. So then we started to work on the extended cut DLC, and it was, it was a very interesting uh, process. Kind of unprecedented. Yeah. Like, it normally, once you put something out there, that's it like was, the final word, right? Totally. It was. It was something where I was really proud because I, before that, I had not really felt like developer, um, and a lot of people, you know, I, there's there's a lot of threads out there that says Jessica Marison's stupid. She doesn't know what she's talking about. She's not a dev. <laughs> No, I'm not a dev. Um, I could not write a video game or tell you how to write a great video game. But community managers are very, very ingrained and um, fixed into that process. And so the extended cut and then um, all of the DLC that followed was the first time that I felt my team, since I was on, because I came up on at the end of like the Mass Effect 3 development cycle, that we were really helping to shape what was going out, just because my team was looked at to say, okay, well, we don't, have, we can't go onto Reddit and and, and even 4chan and <laughs> the BSN and all of these places and and see the bigger picture. So we need you guys to look at the bigger picture. And I've never seen anyone work as hard as the Mass Effect developers worked in in that you know six week span leading up to how we decided to develop the extended cut and then actually working on the extended cut. A lot of developers after after they ship the game, they you know take sabbatical, go on vacation, and no one went on vacation. We said, okay, well cancel your plans. This is what we're gonna work on. And um, it wasn't it wasn't a bad thing. Everyone was, you know, it was kind of um, hi ho, off to work we go about it. And I, we're really proud about it. It was a very emotional experience for the fans and for us, and I, I'm really pleased with what came out of it. I think we should probably wrap this up. Uh, so Jessica's got some business cards I think she mentioned. <laughs> out there, just ask me for one. Please don't <laughs> sign me on to a mailing list. <laughs> <laughs> if you, so if you have any more uh, questions, we'll both be out there if you, if you want to.
want to grab us and say something otherwise. To, hopefully this, this was uh, beneficial. If you thought it uh, was or even wasn't, uh, drop us a line and maybe next time we come back to uh, uh, GamerX, uh, we can try to try to get, you know, we'll finesse. tweak it a bit and yeah. see if there's something more useful. That Tell us what you like. Tell us what you didn't. We can take it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much.